thank you, Lord, for being so good, for being so faithful, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship with us as we sing.
great God. Not only is he a great God, but he's the only God. Amen. He hung the stars in the heavens and called them by name, and not one of them faileth. Amen. What is man? Amen. That God is mindful of us. What is man? That God would remember us. Amen. But of all of his created things, he made man in his own likeness and his own image. And I'm so glad today that he filled us with his spirit. Amen. And we can walk before him today. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful he's in the house today. Can we worship him one more time? thank everybody for their prayers in this past week. Amen. I had a little heart incident. Amen. I had to go to the hospital and they had to put a, a stent in. Amen. We don't know what's on tomorrow for us. Amen. We don't know what might happen when we walk out these doors. But God's with us. Amen. He holds tomorrow in his hand. Amen. In fact, he says our names are written in the palm of his hand. So we know that he's mindful of us and that he never forgets us. Amen. I'm so thankful today. There's no other life to live than to live for God. Amen. Because you can go through things with confidence knowing that God is with you. Amen. Not only with you, but in you. Amen. The hope of glory. I'm so thankful for what we feel here today. I'm so thankful. If you came here with a need today, the word of God says that he's no respecter of person. Amen. He'll do for you what he's done for me, what he's done for others. This cloud of witnesses that we have here today, they can testify that where God has brought them from. Amen. What God is still doing in their lives today, he'll do for you. Amen. All you got to do is reach up and say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. And he'll hear you. I'm so thankful to know that he's a God that loves us and cares for us. Amen. Today is my distinct honor. Amen. To uh, introduce the speaker for today. Amen. Uh, Brother Barker is going to come and talk to us from the word of the Lord. Defeat us from the word of God. Amen. This is where we get our strength. Amen. This is the word that will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. Amen. Can we, as Brother Barker comes, can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Can we stand and lift our hands and make this service what you need it to be? Make this service today what you need it to be in your life. Make this service what you need in your spirit. Because can't nobody reach the throne of grace like you can. Hallelujah. Sick in your body. There's a God that heals. Down in your spirit, there's a God that uplifts. I'm thankful for everything God does. Praise God. As you can tell, I'm about as nervous as a cat in a room full of rocking chairs right now because my cheering section is gone on vacation. Now nah, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. But, uh, uh, there's always something about having Brother Oliver near, close, and no matter what the situation is, he just has a way of stepping right in the middle of it, and, and he's just there. He's about as close to Jesus as you can get. He can get right there. If you have your Bibles, turn with me this morning to John chapter 4. You have to promise to help me preach. Don't leave me up here to preach by myself. Help me preach. John chapter 4 and verse 4, if you're there, say amen. 
Jesus had been in Galilee, he was 30 miles away. Everywhere he went, he went by foot. And then suddenly, somewhere, in verse 4, he says then, he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. I want to encourage you today. What kind of pot did you bring to the well? What kind of pot did you bring to the well? Let's ask the Lord to bless his word. Lamb of God, we pray that right now that you would anoint your word, that you would move, Lamb of God, that your word bless us, help us. In Jesus' precious Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. Trusting that there are no seat belts in your pew, that you'll have uh, the freedom to get up and to worship. When we come to church, somehow there's a thing that comes over us. When I get up out of bed on Sunday morning, I don't think there's a giant praise come flowing out of my mouth. I get up thinking, oh, Lord, i got to hurry up and get dressed and get to church. Don't look at me like you ain't never thought that way before. <laughs> this is the place that when we come, it's not a social club. This is the place that when we come, it's, it's not just a gathering place. If it was that, I, I'd go join the, the, the Foreign Legion or something. I'd become one of, one of those Masons, you know, because if I was looking for a social club. But sometimes we come to church and we fail to look for the one thing that we need the most. We fail to remember that we are not here to see who's sitting in the back pews. I don't know about you, but I don't come here just to look around and say, Oh, look, there's my daughter Woo! and Sister Tina. There's Sister Knox. I almost ran her over out in the street. I don't come to church like that because I understand that there is waiting for me somebody with an intent to take care of my needs. Jesus suddenly said, I got to go to Samaria right now. I got to go meet there right now at a place that was given and dedicated to the place of a well. That place was dug, it's dug out of stone over 75 feet deep, three and a half yards wide. Somebody dug a huge well. It wasn't random. It wasn't like somewhere out in the desert there was a big giant mud puddle. But somebody said, we need a well right here. We need access to life-giving water. We need access to what could be right there if we would dig a well. I may even st stick on this thought. They, they, they came in and said, okay, we're going to dig a well. How about you watch, Dad? I'm going to dig a well. You go right ahead, Jacob. I'm going to sit right here on the side and watch. And they dug a well, not with the purpose to be able to say, oh, that's a nice hole. Well, it only took you six months to dig that hole. Look at that. Wow, you're just really, really good at digging holes. I got a dog that's good at digging holes. he would dig a hole as big as he is and then lay in it. I put cinder blocks in it, he'll dig around them. But somewhere in the midst of this all, Jacob knew that somebody is going to need that place 
and that it was dedicated to the idea that the, the life-giving source was going to be at that well. I don't know about you, but when I come to church, I feel like I'm coming to the life-giving source. I feel like I'm walking to a place that has been dedicated to the very concept and precept that whatever I need to successfully live, it's at that well. And if I could just get to the well, I'll make sure everything will be okay. The well is basically located about two miles outside of the city of Samaria. I, I, I didn't go there and measure with a mileometer. I just go by what they say. But to get the water, it took an effort. Had to go two miles and carry their pitcher. And then they'd get to the well... I don't know about you, but if I carry a pitcher for two miles, I'm going to have to spend the night. Because that's just too much walking. They tell me walking's good for me. It'll help me get skinnier faster. I'm like, I'm not in the mood to get there faster. But there was a well that was situated outside the city that they knew if I need water, I know where the well is. If they needed something to drink, they knew exactly where to go. They didn't, they didn't somehow climb up on the roof and hope for a rain barrel. They didn't somewhere say, I left out a dish out here. I got a little bit of water. No, they said, I need water. It means I got to get my pitcher. It means I got to get my barrel. It means I got to get my vase. And I got to go to the place where the water is. I don't know about you, but when I get here, I have that feeling inside of me that there's no other place I need to be if I'm going to successfully live in Christ. If I'm going to successfully feel like I'm going to make it to the next day. I got to get to the right well. I got to get to the well that was dug and dedicated for the very concept to make sure that I would have access to the water. This church was dug and built and taken through the stone to make sure that when you get up in the morning that you could head to a place where there is a substance of water that you you can drink from. <clears throat> I don't head, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't head to the nearest uh, non-denominational church. Because <clears throat> it's not dug and dedicated for water. It looks nice. It looks like a fountain. Looks like you could kind of gather around it. But there is no place like the well that has been dug to sustain life. <coughs> you having trouble this morning? There's a place right here. Nowhere else. Don't look somewhere else. Don't look anywhere else. Don't look to another person to dig a different well. Understand this, that there was a well that was set in the heart of a man that said there needs to be a church on West Side, and I'm going to do what it takes to make sure that everybody in that neighborhood will be able to drink. This church isn't dry. If it's dry, it's because you haven't gotten in the well. This church isn't empty. This church is full of a living water. The water at the well of Jacob is said to have had a natural spring at the bottom. It wasn't just rainwater. It wasn't condensation. It was pure water. Real water. Deep water. Anybody ever drank out of a pump? Pump your own water into a bucket and get a drink of that? That's like 70 some hundred feet down. That water comes out of there. It don't need ice cubes. It'll quench your thirst like you wouldn't believe. 
I stick my head under that lever. I put my whole body there, my mouth there, because I want to just get refreshed. <laughs> if you didn't get refreshed this morning, it's because you didn't find a place at the well to make sure that the water could touch you, that the water could have access to you. That No, not just you have access to the water, but that the water itself could have access to you. It wasn't put there for just looks. And this woman was going to the well. Now, is that noon, about the sixth hour of the day? I can't imagine being out in the middle of a desert carrying a water pot. I don't know how big the water pot was. Everybody wants to guess. All I know is it's probably just enough water to last till the next day. I don't even know how they got it out. Didn't matter. There was water there. Didn't matter if you, in other words, if you wanted to get in, if you had to, you'd climb down in it. And this woman was coming at noon. Now, people guess and surmise that it was her lifestyle that caused her to somehow come at a time that was inconvenient. You ever feel like sometimes you have to get up in the morning, come to church, it's a little inconvenient? It's, I get, I'm getting a 50-50 out of that right now. No, yes, no, yes. But... She went there nevertheless. Why? Because if she was going to live, she's going to have to have that water, regardless of what her lifestyle was. Regardless of what she was doing or how she was living, she understood this, that without the water from the well, there was no life to be had in her. You need to understand sometimes that without the water from this well, this house of God, you're going to dry up, you're going to die up, you're not going to make it, you got to have it all the time, you got to be able to say it's worth the access, I'll walk two miles to get to it, but i got to live, i got to live. I'm not perfect, I never will be perfect, but I need that well. I got things in my life that shouldn't be there that people don't even know about. But if I can get to the well, one thing's for sure, I'll have one more day with the possibility to change, to be able to get out of this lifestyle. But I got to get to the well to be able to do it. You got to be able to get to the house of God if you're ever going to see things that are in your life disappear. Leave and go somewhere else. I don't know everything about y'all. I'm glad you don't know everything about me. But I do know this. As long as I'm in the well right now, I got enough life to live that if I got to correct things and fix things, I still have the ability to change my life. Without the well, I can't change my life. Without the well, there's no hope for any change in my life. Without the well, I am just a sad and lonely person sitting around with old dry mouth and cotton mouth and not being able to even say anything. I've been to the point once in a while in my life when I was so dry mouth, I couldn't even hardly talk. And if we're not careful, we'll get so dry mouthed that we can't even call on his name. That we can't even reach out. We can't even rebuke the devil. Because we're, I got to have the water. I got to have some water. I need that water really bad. If I'm going to be able to even utter a word of praise, i got to have the well. If I'm going to be able to rebuke the enemy and the devourer thereof, i got to have some water so that I'll have a voice to be able to talk. If I don't get to that well, things are just going to stay the same. 
If I don't get to the well, I'm going to be hopelessly in the condition that I'm in. And she went to that well knowing that other people were looking at her like, whoo, there goes that harlot again. Anybody here perfect, please raise your hand. Nobody's perfect. Which means every time we pull up in the parking lot and we get out of the car, there goes that person again. I don't even know. I don't even know why they won't give up. I don't know why they just just you know, uh, be like Job, curse God and die. What's the deal with them? You know, I saw them the other day. I was in my I was in my Mustang, in his van, red van looking thing, pull up behind me, honking his horn, beep 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 beep, and me being me, I. Looked at the light, and it was red. And the first words out of my mouth was, it's red, stupid. <laughs> Thank the Lord, Brother Crockett did not hear them words. He was the one behind me. What I didn't know is his sister and wife were in the van next to me. They could have probably heard it. I'm almost, I'm almost stuck on that one. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> you know I wouldn't call him stupid to his face. <laughs> but without the well, without the well, I don't understand how people can stay home and not come to church. Because there's a well that is here. Life sustaining evidence of life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, which means that there's a water there. He said that we would draw from the wells of salvation with joy. I don't know about you, but I like reaching into an ice cold well and pulling out a drink when I am so thirsty that I can't hardly stand it. I drink that water till my stomach looks like a giant helium balloon, and I'm just like, oh, if I could just drink one more cup. That stuff is so good. If it's not so good to you, then you're used to just having no water at all. When I was in the world, I didn't have a well. When I was in the world, I was running to and fro, trying to find a place to at least somehow satisfy my soul. When I was in the world, I found myself constantly running to people. Hey, man, is this available? Hey, do you know where I can get this from? No, man, you don't want to mess with that stuff. You know, I remember if it was burning up hot outside, everybody had to have a beer. Nobody wanted water out of the tap because we were all messed up trying to find an answer to the, to the dryness inside. We were looking for something that would satisfy the emptiness and the dryness. And trust me, it ain't out there. It ain't at some other place. It's not at another kind of well. It's not out of somebody else's pitcher. It's not out of somebody else's vase. If I was to trust sometimes in some people when they walk in the door, they look like they had lemonade in their water. I don't need that. I need a refreshing from the Holy Ghost. I need the move of God to touch my life and to change my life. And so as she was standing there, Jesus said, Hey, you want to give me to drink? That woman just stood there and said, How is it that you being a Jew and me being a Samaritan that you would ask of me to give you to drink because it don't make sense. I'm not worthy. I'm not, I'm not the kind of person you would want to talk to. In fact, the Sanhedrin forbid them to carry on conversations from, from Samaritans. And so there she was 
carrying on a conversation with somebody who everybody thought shouldn't be talking to her. But he said, I got to go to Samaria. There's somebody there waiting for me. There's somebody there with a need. And we walk in here and some days we feel like I'm not worthy to talk to God. I'm not worthy to hear his word. I'm not worthy to sing his praises. I'm just me. Who am I? Brother Howard said it that very well. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou would even visit him? I'm a nobody, but I know this, that when I get to the well, he's waiting for me. When I walk to the well, I know that the water that is in the well is going to be blessed by his presence. When I get to the well, I'm going to know that there's somebody there who cares. And his words to her were this. If you knew the gift of God, in case you didn't know it, God's got a gift for you here today. You don't have the Holy Ghost, God's got a gift for you. You got the Holy Ghost, you're struggling and fighting, don't worry, God's got a gift for you. He said, if you knew who it is, this gift of God would be for you. And you would ask of me. If you only came to church to just be seen at the well, then you're missing out on what God wants you to have right now. You need a healing in your body. You need to understand the gift of God that he brought to this service right now. You need a touch in your life and a change in your spirit. You need to understand the gift that he brought here is a gift that is for you. You can't buy it. You can't purchase it. You can't barter for it. You can't exchange it. It is a gift, and a gift is given with the intent to show the receiver that I am aware of you, and I care about you, and I'm here for you right now. I'm bringing this gift to you. Went to my grandson's birthday party. If we, or my granddaughter's, if we didn't bring a gift... And when we handed her the gift, she didn't say, how much do I owe you? She opened that bag. She didn't say, what's the catch? But Mimi said, it's yours. 25-year-old Barbie doll. Hey, you know what? This thing's been around longer than a 25-year-old Barbie doll. This is a gift that has been started at the day of Pentecost. And that gift is still being handed out for this promise is to you and to your children and their children. You understand that? Do you understand that? And as many as afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Hey, he's got a gift right now, and you don't have to qualify for it. You just have to receive it. Don't you understand that I've got something for you, woman at the well? I don't care if you're a Samaritan. I don't care what the popular opinion of you is. You came here with a water pot, and I want to give you something greater than your own water pot. I've got something that is greater than anything that you could drag to the well. Because he said, I would give you living, 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 living. Means it's not stagnant. It ain't collecting flies. It's living. It's moving. It's, It's bubbling up within me. 
It's bubbling up within you. It's a life-giving source, and it's not a dead source or just some kind of a catch basin. It's a place where living water begins to come up and begins to flow. And all you got to do is just get a drink of that living water. If you, don't, if you don't have what you really want God to do in your life today, you need to get up and get to the well. Because he's got a gift of living water. It ain't dead. I, I defy people to say, well, the church is dead. No, it ain't. The well's still alive. If you're dead, it's because you didn't get in the well. If you didn't get your healing, it's because you didn't believe in the power of the water of life. If you didn't get what you needed from God, it's because you were too busy staying at home with your water pot. You brought your water pot. Lord, have mercy. I don't know what your water pot looks like. I don't know how big it is, but I do know this. If you leave the well just bringing your own fleshly water pot, you're going to go home with a burden on your shoulders. You're going to go home thirsty knowing that you got to get back to here. You can't avoid this place. You can't avoid the presence of God if you're going to want to have a freedom from dragging yourself to the well with your own fleshly made water pot. And he said, I'm going to give you living water. You know why people get up out of their seat and run the aisles? Somebody got a hold of something alive. You know why even children respond and come down these aisles like they do? Because they know that there's living water somewhere right here. You know what? When we began to watch people come from off the street that are so bound by things in their life, walk to this altar, pray through, get the Holy Ghost, and watch the joy of God begin to come right out of that face. It's because they got a hold of something alive. They got a hold of something real. And if you don't have the joy of the Lord, if you don't have a smile on your face because of the presence of God, you need to get up and get, take your old nasty old water pot and get up here to the altar and say, I've had enough with drudging back and forth. I'm tired of carrying this thing. When I leave it at this well, it's not going to go back to my house because that man said that I perceived was a prophet that he would give me living water. And there, but you know what the problem is? And I'm going to come to it close to the end, I love to do that because then people say, oh, he might quit. The reason why she had to go at noon is because she had things in her life that she didn't want to mingle with the people at the well. There were things down in her heart and things that she was doing that wasn't socially appropriate. But if she could just get to the well and sneak a drink, sneak some water and take it home, she would at least live to the next day. Sometimes we come to church and we drag our own ugly water pot here. And we come and we don't really get into the service because we got something sitting at home that needs to be given up. He said, I want you to go home and get your husband and bring him here. She said, I, I don't have a husband. He said, well said. He said, because the man that is at your house, you're just living with. You're not going to hide it from God. You're not going to hide it from God at the well. He knows exactly what you need. And he knows that if you don't give up. 
that thing that shared the house, that thing that you have left behind so you could sneak in and, and maybe, you know, raise my hands just a little bit and kind of feel a touch of the Holy Ghost. And then I'll dip my, my old earthly pot in that water and I'll carry it home. And I hope that I make it to Wednesday. I'm going to pray that somehow I'll make it to Sunday. Oh, Lord, I'm going to put it on the counter, and I'm going to treat it very sparsely. I'm just going to get little sips of it and little drinks of it. And God said, that's not my intention for the well. God said, that's not what I designed that well for. It wasn't so that you could harbor it somewhere on a countertop and say, well, I got to go back and uh, hopefully they'll shout. Hopefully they'll dance. Hopefully the, the praise singers will sing something good. Hopefully the musicians will get it all together. Hopefully Brother, Brother Oliver will preach something that will help me get to the well. But I'm telling you what God said, I got a gift for you, and if you only knew who it was if you only understood that it's not me it's not the praise singers it's not the musicians it's God that walked in here and said I'll give you living water if you just reach out to me put that thing at home aside put that 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 vase down and let me give you real life real living water not just something out of a well He said, if you drink of this water, you're going to drink again. You come to church only just to be seen, only just for a small touch, only just for a, a small movement of God in your life, then you're going to be thirsty again. You're going to want it again. First time I got the Holy Ghost, I don't even remember saying anything. I was gone. I shouted as a teenager. I looked like a rubber ball coming up and down off the ground, off like a racquetball court. If I did that now, I'd probably, probably people had to help me up. But it still doesn't stop the spring of living water inside of me that comes up whenever I find myself in need, whenever I have to keep praying, God, I can't get through this problem. God, I need a touch in my body. All I know is, God, if you can just give me a drink of that living water, if you can just give me a drink out of your well and not my well, if I can just learn to get to the place where you are and where you're giving life-giving water, then I'll be all right. I'll be okay. Hey, you came here with things that are bothering you, things that are weighting you down, things that you feel like all you can do is bring your own water pot and that's all you're going to get from God? Or are you ready for living water? Anybody here thirsty enough to say, God, give me that water? She turned to him. She said, sir, you don't have anything to draw that water out with. <laughs> you, you don't have all that possibility. But somehow inside of me, I'm not doubting. I'm kind of wondering, so can you just give me some of that water? God has got it here now for you. You need the Holy Ghost. It's as simple as getting out of your seat and walking up here and saying, give me that water. Give me that water, Jesus. God, give me that touch from your throne. You need a blessing in your life. You need a refreshing in the spirit. Then you got to get up out of your seat, get away from your house, leave your water pot behind, and walk up to the well. Anybody here ever drank out, drank out of a spring, comes out of the side, a hill. They had one on the way to Noblesville. My father-in-law dragged us over there with one gallon jugs. He put his face in that thing and he'd come up and go, oh, that is so good. I guarantee you that you walk up to this well 
and you put your heart, your mind, your soul, and your face in it, and somehow the refreshing is going to hit you to the point where you say, oh, that is so good. I needed that for so long. I have been so thirsty that I don't want to just somehow gather it. I want to get in it. I want to get right on in it. They had a place over there by guys called the spigot. Anybody know what that is? About an eight-inch pipe comes out of the ground, just shooting ice cold water out of it. My brother-in-law would used to run cross country. I'd ride the bike behind him so I can encourage him to go faster while I just sat there. And we got to that, we got to that place, and man, we would just get out. Oh. Oh. It's just too good. I'm telling you right now, God is just too good. He'll give you something you can't contain. He'll give you something that'll be joy unspeakable and full of glory. He'll give you something that when you go home, you'll say, come and see a man that told me all about my life. Come and hear a word of God that will make a difference in your life. And the entire city of Samaria went back to the well. You want people here at this well? You got to have something to take out there to entice them instead of just a water pot. It gives me shivers right now. I can remember that spigot. I can remember every time it seems like the Holy Ghost just begins to come when I feel like I'm at my bottom. When I feel like I don't have an answer or a hope for tomorrow. Suddenly I can just remember like... Do it again, Jesus. I'm saying do it again, Jesus. I'm saying let it flow right now, Jesus. God, I'm praying right now somebody get a hold of this and say, you know what? I want some of that living water. I want some real water. I want some soul-changing water. I want something that will make a difference in my life. I want something that will give me the shudders when I get in it. I want something that will change my entire life, that I'll have something to tell other people about. Oh, Jesus, let me get in that water right now. What are you waiting for? Oh, Brother Parker, it's altar call. No, it's water call. It ain't water call. It's water call. You need something right now? You just simply get up and say, give me that water right now. I challenge you to get up and say, I need some of that water right now, Jesus. God, I'm going to close my eyes. I need a healing in my body. I need a touch in my spirit. God, I want you to give me that living water right now. Jesus, Jesus, you promised it to me. You promised it the well that I
got to yield it. Yield up whatever it is that you got bound at home. You need to get rid of the things that have you keeping you from just, just saying, God, let it flow. God, let it flow. Somebody needs this today. Come on. Pray with them.